So who wants to go on an adventure? We're going to go camping next weekend. Today is Sunday. So Saturday morning, my buddy Peter and I are going to hit the road. But when you got a camping adventure, you got to prepare. So I got to go start getting stuff ready for this trip. Something that's always a lot of fun when camping, usually kind of becomes the main event of the day often is cooking and making some delicious meals but you got to look at the limitations you have you know you've got no hot running water you know do dishes or clean pots and pans so here is the hack that i've been using for years everybody loves it and i'm never going to stop doing it and that is i'm going to use vacuum sealer bags freeze everything and you can boil in the bag with these things and the first pre-cooked meal that I'm going to vacuum seal is right here is the beginning of it. This is a pork shoulder that we cooked really low, many hours, overnight actually. And I'm going to make it into pulled pork. So let's see how tender it is. See if I can pull out the bone. <laughs> yeah, that was pretty easy. Now that I've shredded all the pork, I'm gonna put in the barbecue sauce. Guy Fieri's barbecue sauce, sweet mesquite. That's the first thing, basically that is done. Let's go let it simmer for another 30 minutes or so just to get the sauce all in there and then I will be vacuum sealing it. That means I need to get out the hamburger. Well, I'm not making it today but I'm getting it started by getting the hamburger out. I'm also going to make some of my famous hamburger patties and they'll be ready to be thrown on the grill when we get out there. This is the hard part. I've got all this stuff. Some of it's up pretty darn high. I gotta get up on the ladder and uh, figure it out um, what I'm gonna take and just have it all ready I got lots of time and I love that and if you ever see me in my packing videos for Disney you'll know I I like to be prepared definitely need that and where we're going there's no water so we'll have to take that what I usually use this one for is just water for washing so sort of I set up a washing area underneath that and then we just take bottled water This is the main pile here. This is the first thing. This is the tripod grill and lamp lantern hanger. Yeah, you just hang it, your stuff over the fire. You can cook whatever you want, just over the hot coals. And uh, at nighttime, I use it for a lantern holder with this Coleman gas lantern. Got two coolers, usually one for drinks and one for food and then lots of water containers because as I was saying where we go there are no taps there's no electricity there's nothing so we got to bring everything we want of course got to have a nice comfy chair I've had this thing for years and years and years it's an awesome chair folds flat very comfortable nice back and you're sitting around the campfire this is just the general <laughs> bunch of different things um, always nice to have a bit of carpet area to take your shoes off before you go into your tent or your camper or the back of your car, whatever you happen to be using. And then there's all of this, kind of everything you could ever need. We've got paper plates, we've got some uh, nicer plates, like a little, little camping kit, little picnic kit I guess you could say this stuff is called fire paste there's a few camping specialty stores and well, at least in Canada where you can buy it this stuff is crazy 
it is, uh, I don't know what it is. It's like a paste. It's like, I don't know, napalm. <laughs> it burns intensely hot. It's like a sticky gel. And you just rub it uh, or just squeeze some out like a toothpaste on some wood. And you light it on fire and it's going to burn. Even if it's wet, it's going to burn. It burns like a thousand degrees. Got your hatchet. Very important. Getting some kindling going. Just chopping off some, you know, fallen branches. Chopping them up for burning. Got to have it. Heavy duty gloves, again, for gathering wood. There's another little camping trick. Take a coffee can. Keeps your toilet paper in there. Keeps it dry and all the bugs out. Here's another excellent, excellent thing to have. This is a hot pot. So basically it's just a giant pot, but it's got a little spigot on the bottom. So you just keep this full of hot water. You boil up a bunch of water. It stays hot for a long time. Use it for cleaning. Use it for making a cup of instant coffee. Well, I've got everything packed up now in the car. That's where I'm gonna keep it. And I've just set up this table. This is another thing I'm gonna be bringing. This is a pretty beat up table, but man, it's never fantastic to have one of these when you're out in the middle of nowhere. So now I am going to start sealing up this pulled pork into these vacuum seal bags. Once I suck out all the air and seal it, throw it in the freezer, and then it's ready to go. I just toss it into a pot of boiling water. When it's done, it's done. I just crumple this up, throw it in our trash bag, and haul it out with us. Something to be mindful of when you're doing vacuum sealer bags is making sure that the area where you're going to do the seal is very clean and don't overfill the back. Perfect seal. So I'm just going to throw this in the freezer. Today is Monday. The day is over as far as work goes. And I'm continuing with the camping prep. I have a pot of chili and I'm making some KD. And then the, both of those things, I'm going to vacuum seal them, put them in the freezer, and we'll be good to go. So, <laughs> getting close, and I'm still putting stuff together. Let me show you what I've done so far. So I've started packing everything into the car, and then I'm gonna drive out to my friend's place and load up the camper. Got some, I got a nice big bin here that I'll use for all of our food that doesn't need to be frozen or refrigerated. Hot dog buns, and hamburger buns, I got chips. Got some coffee cups and instant coffee in there. A little, <laughs> this is funny. These ketchups, uh, mustard and mayo. Got them from the Hard Rock Hotel. I'm just preparing some potatoes. Those are gonna be baked potatoes that we'll throw in the fire. And I just uh, wash them, put a, uh, salt and pepper on them, a little bit of oil, wrap them up in foil, and they're good to go. So I just put together a garlic, soy, um, brown sugar, marinade and with olive oil and I'm putting these in the freezer and these are ready to go. These are just going to taste better and better the longer they marinate in a vacuum and then the rest I'm going to grill up for tonight. Let's see how these pork chops are doing. Oh yeah. Very nice. My car is loaded up. On my way to Peter's, and we're gonna load up the camper, throw everything into his truck. Hopefully, it all fits, and uh, head out into the unknown because we've never been here before. So we're just on an adventure to find a place to camp. And uh, again, I don't care if it rains. I really don't. I just need to get away. Camper is packed with all of our stuff. First off, we're loading up with our own wood to get started with. And because we're staying in the province, that is legal. If we're going into BC, we could not do that. That would be against the law. And you can see, yeah, we just piled up on Pete's bed there. I'm just going to sleep on this couch. That's all I need. We got a stove, we got a fridge, microwave. We're, pff, this is barely camping. Three hours later, we're ready to go. I think I'm, uh, 
I'm driving the big rig. Are you excited? This is Margaret. Yeah, you good girl. She's gonna be our, our buddy for the trip. Right? You good girl. Yeah. Oh, you silly. Art of camping in the rain. One of the first things you want to do is set up a tarp, and I'm going to throw this over this tree to make that line. Well, the camp is coming together. The tarps. We realized that the awning wasn't working on the camper, so we used a tarp. Here's the big tarp that's going to be near the fire where we're going to hang out. My one more rope rock throw up over this tree. Well, I think we've done a pretty awesome, awesome job with our tarps. We got the tunes going, table set up, we're getting the tire torch going, we're gonna have a fire. I think we're okay. As long as we don't have too high of a flame, we've got a perfect little shelter here. Go camping with a welder, you're gonna have a fire. Guaranteed. Tiger Torch does the trick every time. Say our tarp job is pretty awesome. It's holding all the heat in. It's high enough that it doesn't really risk burning. And every once in a while, this area will just fill up with water and dump out away from us. It's just working perfect. Drank some coffee this morning, made some breakfast on the fire, and we're just, we're playing some cards. Playing cribbage, drinking Jack and Coke, eating jalapeno cheddar chips. In my crib, I got nothing. It's about supper time, and uh, I'm going to show you what we're making. Oh. These little balls of foil, baked potatoes that have been cooking for about an hour next to the coals. And here on my tripod cooker, awesome thing. Just suspend it over your flames and we've got some filet mignon beauties. Gotta say, we did a great job setting up the tarp. It started raining and you don't even know it. This is a pretty awesome campsite. Here is where I've been sleeping. It's not too bad. I mean, it's a bit of a mess, but what do you expect for two, two dudes? And uh, yeah, the weather's pretty terrible again. Screen got crashed in the storm last night. So it's 
a little messed up. But the tarps are broken. Not broken, but they all need to be readjusted because there's a lot of wind. We got power, you can hear that generator going. So we're making some coffee. Got the fire going. Making a lot of bacon. It was really awesome to be right next to this river, the Red Deer River. This is pretty red, that capping, I must admit. We got the, <laughs> Peter's uh, welding rig is the generator, and uh, we got a toaster oven going and a full on coffee maker. Makes life a little bit better when it's kind of terrible weather wise. We have a wood situation happening right now. That's about all the wood. Here, I'll zoom in. It's all the wood we got left of the wood that we brought. That's good wood. Peter's got a chainsaw, so he's working on something that he found. Can you see him back there? Where is it? There's your pineapple. That's um. Uh, it's weird that cooking bacon is basically the only thing I'm thinking about right now. We've got no internet. Uh, I don't know what's going on anywhere. I don't know what's going on with my work. It's 90% good feeling, 10% like, should, should there be something I know? And I think that's part of the effect of being addicted to information. It's like a bit of a withdrawal feeling, but that's okay, you know, um, it's good to be reminded that you, you don't need to be checking your Twitter feed every, you know, 15 minutes or, you know, how many views did my video get, you know, is there any new comments, uh, no, I'm just cooking bacon on fire. I am making us some bacon and tomato toasted sandwiches. Simple but delicious with these little potato pancakes. It's pretty much the perfect fire right now with getting mostly hot coals. It gives a lot more even heat. Bacon tomato sandwich. <laughs> I'm not sure all the rules, but the rules we live by are dead standing trees. Trees that have already died, but are standing. And what that does is uh, two things. First, you're not killing a healthy tree, which you don't really need to do that. Second, if you try to burn that healthy tree, it's not gonna, it's not gonna work. You need to have wood that's been cured, meaning that it's been dead for a long time, cut and stacked and dried for a number of years, or it, it died and it's still standing, so it's been curing for a couple of years. Today's beer is Big Rock Scottish Heavy Ale. And I like how it's got this little thing here that tells you kind of what this beer flavor profile is. It's my kind of beer. Oh yeah, spark's gonna burn awesome. And it's delicious. Pretty wholesome bark. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's coming right at me. Yeah, 
had a screen to quite a tumble last night. Luckily, you can just go in the washing machine. It's kind of a mess. That's a log. I think we burned it in half and it's worth the two halves on. Perfect. Yeah. Watch that alcohol percentage. That's not American beer. <laughs> what is this, a fire for giants? notice what you drink at Guinness every sip tells a little story like how many rings it takes till you finish the beer so it's a 100% organic <laughs> bark it only comes from the finest trees it's $50 a piece think about camping really is a lot of just um, staring at fire Drinking beer, you know, planning the next meal, and uh, listen to the river. I didn't even have any music on all day. It's five o'clock. Haven't listened to a single song. Just listen to wind and water and fire. It's pretty awesome. <laughs> down here we got chili it's already getting warmed up in the microwave <laughs> more cheating fries we got fries going <laughs> Casey's makes a good hot dog but Look at this guy. Holy. You got the means to make a very good. Just give me a kiss. Turn it. Turn it into the fire. <laughs> wow. <laughs> 
you you're, today, you? you're crazy. <laughs> you're crazy. I'm gonna choose a whole lot of eat this today. tree. I'm just gonna chew wow. A tree on fire? Thank you very much. Yes, please. <laughs> Warm it up for me, Daddy. <laughs> Barbecue tree. <laughs> He died as so many young men of his generation before his time. In your wisdom, Lord, you took them. As you took so many bright, flowering young men, the Jason, the Londoc, the Hill 364. These young men gave their lives. So Donnie. Well, that was a crazy camping weekend. Of course now <laughs> that we're packing up, the weather is getting to be beautiful again. And Peter has been asleep for 12 hours at this point, and he had a two hour nap last night, just right after supper. That boy was tired. So I have been uh, picking away at cleaning up everything starting to organize things because we are leaving I don't have to go back to work until Wednesday today is Monday but we've pretty much run out of wood uh, Peter's chainsaw died so we can't harvest anymore and um, this gives me a day to recover <laughs> but it was awesome even with the rain this tarp set up is uh, very good. <laughs> it's always fun to try to figure out ways to work around the weather and it's kind of cool just to remind yourself how simple things can be. Here we are and this tarp became a home. <laughs> it's true. You start off with sort of a, a a dead campsite, and it's like, okay, well, and then it becomes your little home for a while, and you learn all the little intricacies. Like, in my kitchen at home, I don't have to work my way around a tree stump. So, it's interesting, it, it has its own little character, every campsite. see we're pretty much done the last few things <sighs> it's a lot of work so we done five gallons here's another seven gallons Fire is out. Yeah, I think so. For cool. sure. Well, it's pretty much exactly as it was. There's there's some more wood, actually. That, that'll burn once it dries out in a few days. We left a few pieces of wood for the next people who come along. Other than that, I mean, it's a camp spot. It's definitely been used as a camp spot many, many times. Lots of little fire pits around. But... It looks exactly the same as when we got here. always more of an adventure than you think it's going to be and I'm always way more tired than I think I'm going to be. Even though I slept pretty good except for the first night. 
It was, uh, it was really cool. It was really awesome to disconnect, to unplug, and uh, just worry about simple things. Wood for the fire. Cook the food. Mm, yeah, yeah, little things. Not, not much, but it was nice. It was a nice break. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you next time from the Holy Moly.